this morning and afternoon, we've heard a lot of example that the globally, the energy transition is occurring, like a kind of a revolution is happening. And what's the main driver of that revolution? What do you think about it? Um, I think it's free markets are actually driving it. It's um, trying to build competition and build transparency and build diversity. Uh, it's about um, building energy security. That is a major issue in Japan. Uh, there is a climate change aspect. I think what we've heard is Paris COP21 was very successful. And so there is an inevitable policy and market change that's going to occur in all of the countries around the world. And it might not be a focus in Japan today, but it is inevitable that Japan will have to evolve as other countries do. As you mentioned, it seems like we Japanese have not introduced such revolution yet. For example, the cost of renewables are declining around the world, but um, uh, Japan's renewable energy is still expensive. So what do you think that, uh, what is behind of this context? I think to some degree, the lack of market contestability is a factor there because I'm hearing in the last two days that Japan, the cost of solar, the cost of wind is still prohibitively high. And yet I'm looking at countries like India, where the cost of solar has dropped 25% in one year. The cost of solar has dropped 80% in five years. It's dropped 25% in one year. So a long-term clear policy framework and a vision from the government can then be implemented by the market and it will be implemented a lot faster than maybe policymakers think. So longevity of policy, certainty of policy, and then freeing up the market to actually deliver is probably what's required. And then the government will be pleasantly surprised at how quickly both wind and solar costs come down. Okay. I think that you partially already responded the question, but that this is a final question for you. Uh, from the point of view of finance, that what, is, what do you recommend to Japan? Please give it to us. In providing a longevity of policy, uh, f the evidence out of China, the evidence out of Germany, out of India, is that the capital markets will very, very quickly respond to a price signal and a regulatory signal. So we have globally companies spending hundreds of billions of dollars in India as we speak, because they now see long-term policy certainty. The financial market's capacity is almost unlimited. We've seen that in, in maybe in a negative way in Japan in the last two years. You've gone from almost zero solar to 10 gigawatts a year, but it's at prohibitively high cost. Free up the market, do reverse auctions maybe, and the price of solar will come down very rapidly financial market capital will flow into Japan and the investment will flow, the f capital markets will flow into wind. Globally, wind is totally accepted as a viable investment vehicle. At the moment, it's only policy barriers that are stopping Japan getting potentially $50 billion of investment in wind in the next 10 years. So Japan could possibly reverse its thinking and look at let's build energy security through diversity open the markets up and see a lot more capital flow into domestic sources of energy that will enhance Japan's future. Um, let me add just one question. I think that you are warning to uh, the uh, financiers like, you know, that the, the shift is occurring very rapidly. So you are introducing the example of divestment or something. But Japan is trying to go the different way. What do you think about this direction? What, I'm, what I would remind Japanese investors and the Japanese um, listeners is that trying to stymie an inevitable change that's driven by technology and driven by capital markets 
is a very value destructive policy for companies to pursue. Companies that try and deny an inevitable change end up destroying shareholder wealth, their shareholder wealth. There is, in Australia, we've had the same thing. The Australian corporates for the last five years have been trying to deny an inevitable change and their share prices are being smashed. We have our major utilities down 60, 70, 80% in the last five years. That's enormous value destruction. And yet they hold the regulatory power. So logic would say if they're able to abuse regulatory power to reward their shareholders, the share price would go up. They've denied a technology change and their share price has been smashed as a result. That didn't serve their shareholders, it certainly didn't serve the country. And that's the Australian example. I would say the same thing's happening in Japan at the moment. The corporates, the utilities are saying, we're monopolies, we control the market, we control the pace of change. Technology can't be controlled by an individual corporation and trying to stymie it through regulatory barriers will just fail. Yeah, at this the conference I've heard several times that do you need more examples? So thank you very much, Tim. Thank you.